Welcome to Peculiar Tales. Today's tale is short, but not necessarily sweet. Speaking of, short and sweet are two varieties of bread, and bread is made with dough. Dough is sometimes referred to as alive when active yeast is added for the rising process. But it's the yeast that's living, not the dough, right? Bakers tend to cook dough once risen, and say it may be problematic if it rises or lives for too long. Usually, this is to save the texture of the bread once baked, also to prevent harmful bacteria from growing amongst the good bacteria. But what if I told you dough can sometimes become too alive if left alone? This is dough. Living next to the backside of a bakery has its benefits and downfalls. For example, the smell of baked goods both sweet and savory throughout the day, but also the sight, and oftentimes the smell too, of their almost constantly overflowing dumpster. It's really about what you'd expect if you take a moment to imagine it yourself. But there was a totally unexpected, unwarranted, an honestly haunting experience I had while living in that situation that I'll never forget. I've avoided telling this to anyone before because I'm sure no one will believe me, especially with a distinct lack of evidence. And worse yet, that they'll think it's the dumbest thing they've ever heard. It's just been gnawing at me for years and years, and I need to get it off my chest. So let me start at the beginning. It was during Thanksgiving that this whole thing began. I worked from home, so of course the majority of my time was spent there. I was ready to get away for a while, but couldn't. I was trapped working and waiting to get some more paid time off for a later holiday or a personal one of my own. I lived alone and the majority of people in the same apartment complex had left for family instead of hosting. So with the bakery empty and lifeless, and my apartment seeming so as well, there was already an unsettling feeling hanging over everything. I needed a break from my work. I wasn't and am still not a smoker, but liked to go out onto the deck outside of my apartment to catch some fresh air since I was cooped up inside all day in front of a computer. It was a cool day, but the sun was shining, and I figured I better savor it before it got too cold in the coming months. The view outside was not the greatest, as you'd expect living in the alley of a bakery. The majority of the view consisted of asphalt and concrete, the bakery's dumpster, and at least in the distance some trees. But it being November, they were already sleeping skeletons of their former vibrant selves. So after basking in the sun, allowing it to beam down on my forehead and shoulders for a few minutes, hoping to stay warm in the cooling afternoon, I directed my gaze down to the dumpster. Since there was nothing else to look at on the lifeless but optimistically sunny day, I was hoping to see a squirrel or a bird making a meal out of the outcast bread and other ingredients spilling out from the top of the dumpster. There were no hungry creatures, but my attention was grasped. A massive amount of uncooked dough sat within the dumpster, and by that I mean it looked as though nearly the entire dumpster was filled with it, beyond a few more normal pieces of garbage here and there. There was more garbage scattered around the outside of the dumpster than in it, making it look as though the dough was slowly rising and pushing it outwards. The more rational side of my brain decided it had to just look like it was that much dough, and that it was actually just sitting atop more garbage beneath it. I also couldn't comprehend why so much dough would be thrown out. I briefly entertained the idea of it happening in the summer, and wondered if the dough would not only rise, but 
possibly even bake in the massive tin. I pulled out my phone and snapped a picture of the strange sight, then sent it off to a few people to see their reaction. After shaking my head at the incredulous situation, I decided I just had to see how much dough there actually was. So I made my way down the steps and began to search for something to poke at the dough with. If it was spoiled, I wasn't planning on touching it with my hands. I eventually found some discarded plastic tubing of unknown purpose and made my way to the scene. At first, the plastic slid down into the dough with relative ease, just needing some minor pressure to break through. It kept going and going until it suddenly stopped. I could tell I hadn't hit anything, certainly not the bottom of the dumpster. It was as if the dough itself seized up. I tried to pull the plastic out a bit for a stronger push downward, but found that it wouldn't come back out either. This seemed a bit odd, but at the time, I didn't think much of it. I abandoned the plastic and headed back inside. Although I still wasn't sure if the dough spanned throughout the whole dumpster, I was still amazed by whatever massive amount was in there. It was later in the evening when I was able to pull myself away from work for a moment. I decided to check out the dough again, this time taking a peek out of the window. The whole time while working, I'd been thinking about the dough, wondering what the garbage workers would think of it when they had to come and slop it out into their truck. As I looked out the window, I noticed that the dough had grown larger, now seeping over the top of the bin, strands slowly stretching down to the ground beneath. The dough was indeed rising. While gazing in awe at the massive glob, wondering how large it could grow, I noticed something else rather peculiar about the primordial bread. Steam wafted out from the dumpster, dissipating into the cold night. I had to document it, take pictures, record it, otherwise no one would believe what I was seeing. I headed back out onto the deck in the last waning glow of the day. Although the dumpster was further illuminated by a streetlight above, it was still too dim for my phone to get anything good from afar. So I made the decision that after finishing my work in a couple more hours, I'd head back down the stairs and to the dumpster for some up-close pictures, perhaps a video, hoping it'd be even larger and, of course, still steaming by then. Throwing on a coat and slipping on some shoes after my workday was complete, I peered out of the window one more time to check on the dough before heading out into the frigid night. It was both larger and, luckily, still steaming. I paused, noticing a skunk meandering about the base of the dumpster, its nose to the ground, sniffing the trash the dough had outcast. Oftentimes I'd see nocturnal creatures climb into the dumpster to grab a quick bite of hard bread, and was curious to see what the skunk would do with the dough. Well, that and I didn't want to get sprayed. So I waited and watched to see what would happen. Eventually, as I expected, the skunk climbed its way up the corner of the dumpster, struggling a bit on the slippery metal, but eventually making it up to the top. I was hoping for some kind of comedic reaction, whether it would get confused, frightened, or just start pigging out in doughy heaven. But what I got was far more disturbing. After a moment of hesitation, the skunk crawled onto the dough, its paws lightly sinking into its now pillowy surface, then it bent down to begin eating. A moment later, all I could see of the skunk was its twitching tail and a hind leg. The rest of it was consumed by the dough. As the skunk's defense mechanisms kicked in, and its smell penetrated the air wafting up into my apartment. I watched in horror as the rest of it was pulled downwards. The surface of the dough quickly returned to as it was prior to the skunk's meddling, as if it was never even there. I paced shakily back and forth in front of the window as realization kicked in. The skunk did not sink into the dough. The dough pulled it in. Was the dough living? Did it eat that skunk? Or was it some kind of defense mechanism like the skunk's smell? 
But more importantly, back to the first question, was the doe alive? I knew I still had to go out there. I had to record it. No one would believe me otherwise. It needed to be done, no matter how badly I didn't want to. I made my way outside and down the stairs, this time finding a stick to much more cautiously poke at the steamy, presumably living, mass. I was shaking even worse at this point, a mixture of rising fear and lowering temperatures. I struggled to even pull my phone out of my pocket and had an even harder time getting to the camera. I even needed to set down the stick to steady my phone in one hand while pressing with the other. Finally recording, I picked the stick back up and ever so gently brought it to the dough. I slowly pushed forward until the tip of the stick just barely pressed into the dough. It did nothing. I let out a bit of a sigh, straightening myself out, realizing how tense and hunched over I was. I began to think that maybe I was just seeing things after such a long day on the job. Maybe there was no skunk, but then the smell was there, still lingering in the air. Continuing to record, I moved closer to the dumpster, trying to determine where the skunk was pulled in. Since the doe was inactive, sleeping, not sure of the correct terminology, I decided to prod and dig into where I thought the skunk had gone under to see if there was anything still there or at least what had happened to it. The doe gave way surprisingly easily as I dug down into it, almost as if it wanted me to. The warmth radiating out from the dumpster was somewhat noticeable in the cold air. It took a moment, but finally I hit something hard. I pulled the doe away as best as I could with the stick, and then there, burrowed deep into the doe, were the bones of the skunk, nearly completely clean and barren. I lifted my phone over the hole, flashlight on to get it recorded, but as I did so, the massive doe tightened. It quickly closed around the stick. I released it and tried to jump back with my phone, but dropped it in the process. It was quickly pulled under like the skunk, and just like that, all evidence was lost except for one picture that I had sent out previously. Not wanting to become the doe's next meal, I rushed back up to the warmth and protection of my apartment. Once again, I found myself pacing back and forth by the window, wondering how to handle the situation. I could always call the police, but they'd probably just think I was insane and either ignore me or maybe even jail me if I pushed it hard enough. Yet, if I were to let it go, what would that thing become? Would it consume people as well as animals? Then I paused, noticing movement outside. The dough was slowly spilling out the front of the dumpster and collecting on the pavement beneath. Soon the dumpster was empty and a massive dough lay in the alleyway. Slowly, it inched itself forward in a motion that I'd best describe as a mixture between a slug and a caterpillar. A thin trail of dough scrapings left behind as it brushed against the rough pavement. It then maneuvered itself over a chain link fence, small globs of the dough sticking into the holes to pull itself up and then retreating before another jutted itself out into the next hole. One after the other it repeated this until it slowly rolled down over the other side and disappeared into the wooded area beyond. In the end, I never reported or mentioned it to anyone until now. I would like to move on and just believe that it was, in fact, all in my imagination, but I know deep down that what I saw was real. Thankfully, I haven't heard any stories about someone being eaten or coming across the abomination yet. But if you ever come across a sentient glob of dough, or whatever it may look like now, first of all, I'm sorry. And secondly, get away. That was Doe. And this is Peculiar Tales. I hope you enjoyed the story. If you did, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, leaving a like, and clicking the bell to be notified when the next Peculiar Tale 
in this collection is released. If you ever come across this doughy entity, just remember that dough needs to be baked. Though, carrying around a portable oven everywhere you go may become rather impractical. If you'd like to download this tale and others, click the Bandcamp link in the description below. It's free to download, but donations are greatly appreciated. You can also donate directly to Peculiar Tales through the links found in the description below. Thank you for joining me.